Hello and welcome back to I and Me. Today's video is a complete guide to fractions covering addition, subtraction, multiplication and even division. Questions similar to this, this, this and even this. We're going to start off with addition and subtraction. We're going to be looking at them together as they follow the same steps and the same rules. The main difference of addition and subtraction from multiplication and division is that they need to have the same denominators in order to add or subtract. If you have the same denominator, then you're onto a winner. The question is easy. You literally just add or subtract the numerators depending what the question is asking. Questions like two fifths add one fifth. You literally are just adding the parts. Two parts add one part makes three parts, giving an answer of three fifths. Some people ask, why don't you add the denominators if you're adding the numerators? And I could explain how the denominator represents what the whole is broken into and continue to give an in-depth explanation. And if that's what you want, great. Check out this video in the description below. But for this video, I'm just going to say, if you had two penguins and you added one penguin, would you have three penguins or three penguin penguins? If you think the answer is penguin penguins, then I'm lost for words. If you know the answer is three penguins, then that explains to you why we don't need to add the whole twice. Just have a think about that. Moving on. What happens when you have questions like these? For these questions, you need to change the fractions into equivalent fractions, as the denominators are not the same. If you want a full explanation on how to do this, follow this link in the description below. However, for this video, we're going to use a quick trick to find the common denominator. The trick, multiply the denominators of each fraction to find the common denominator. For example, here, for this question, 4 sevenths subtract 2 eighths, I have two different denominators, sevenths and eighths. So to find the common denominator, I would simply multiply the seven and the eight, giving me 56. This tells me that both fractions can be converted into an equivalent fraction over 56. So now I know 56 is a common denominator. I can convert both of these fractions into an equivalent fraction over 56. If you need help with equivalent fractions, you can find the fuller explanation in this video below. For this video though, I will quickly show you what I would do. I would write both fractions with an equal sign and over 56 like this. Then, remembering whatever happens to the bottom happens to the top. And I would work out each fraction and their equivalents. So 4 sevenths, 7 times 8 makes 56, so 4 times 8 is 32, 32 56. 2 eighths, 8 times 7 is 56, so 2 times 7 is 14, 14 56. Now I can answer the question 4 sevenths subtract 2 eighths using my equivalent fractions. 32 56 subtract 14 56 gives me 18 56. So 4 sevenths subtract 2 eighths is 1856. If this was addition, one second, then I would still do exactly the same, but instead of subtracting the 14 from 32, I would add the 14 to 32, which would make 4656. Simples. Next, I'm going to be looking at multiplying and dividing our fractions by a whole. What you want to do for both of these is multiply or divide the parts that you have. For example, in two thirds, you have two parts out of three. It's a multiplication question, so you want to simply multiply the parts that you have. Two parts multiplied by 270 gives you 540 parts out of three. With a division question, we have three parts out of 10, and we want to divide those three by three as well. Well, three can be shared out with three people each person would get one part. So our answer would be one tenth. Unfortunately, it's not always as straightforward as this in our tests. With our multiplication answer, they wouldn't accept it as the number at the top is so much bigger than the number at the bottom. So in this case, you'll need to do one more step. You'll need to divide the parts that you have by the whole of your fraction. So 540 divided by the whole, which is three. That would give me an answer of 180. When do I need to do this extra step though? That's a good question. My advice will be to always do it, unless you can't, because doing it will give you an answer that has a remainder. 
For example, if the question wasn't two thirds times 270, and instead was two thirds times 280, I'd still do the same first step of 280 times by my parts, which is two. That would give me 560. Now, 560 divided by three, well, three doesn't go into 560. It would be 186 remained at two. So if dividing by the denominator, the whole, my answer would leave me a remainder. That's when I know the test would be happy with me stopping at step one. Back to division. With division, I would get the mark for simply dividing the numerator. That is literally perfect. So in most cases, it only requires that simple first step. However, sometimes I can't divide my parts equally. Imagine this question was four tenths divided by three instead. Here, four can't be shared between three equally. When this happens, I need to multiply the denominator. So here I do 10 times three, giving me 30. I don't touch the numerator at all. This would give me the answer of four thirtieths. So to quickly summarize, when I add or subtract fractions, I need to make sure both fractions have the same denominators. If they don't, I must find a common denominator in which both fractions could be converted into with what we know about equivalent fractions. Then I simply add or subtract the numerators. With multiplication, I multiply the numerator and if I can, I divide the denominator. With division, I divide the numerator, but if I can't, I multiply the denominator. With division, I don't do both. With multiplication, you hopefully can do both, but if not, just stick to step one.